Good afternoon, everyone. We have another Mailgun Hangout today. Uh, my name is Drew. I am uh, guest hosting, and I will uh, hand the ball off to the, the rest of our uh, panel here. We've got uh, Chris, who is going to help us out, and Angela as well, who are going to share with us how to use webhooks to deliver emails. So we're going to let them share their wisdom with us. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Drew. Uh, thank you, everyone, for joining today for Melgun's uh, third hand hangout. Uh, I apologize for the delay. We had a few technical difficulties, um, but we're ready to get started. Uh, we have here Chris Hammer, who has been with Melgun close to two years, and prior to that, he uh, worked with the Rackspace email and applications um, business here, so he knows a lot about email. Um, and today's topic, we are going to cover webhooks. Um, so for those of you that already are familiar with webhooks, we are going to start from, from the basics on and what a webhook, what webhook is and how you can use it. Um, and, and Chris is also going to take a, a bit of a deep dive into how to apply it for, for different use cases. So um, looking forward to having this hangout with you guys. Um, if you have any questions in the meantime, feel free to um, submit them, and we'll definitely get, the, get to them at the end. Um, and as always, um, when this hangout is over, we will have a recording, and we will send a link out and post to our blog so you can reference it later on. Um, all right, Chris, you ready? Yeah, thank you, Angela. Today I'm going to cover our webhooks feature and how you can effectively use it to monitor your email deliverability as well as recipient engagement. I'm going to start off by giving an overview of what webhooks are and how they could benefit you. Afterwards, I'll dig into some specifics such as events that trigger webhooks, the data that is sent via the webhooks, and how to configure webhooks with Mailgun. I'll end with a couple of use cases and examples that utilize the Heroku environment. So, what's a webhook? Webhooks are user-defined HTTP callbacks that are triggered by email events, such as a successful email delivery or perhaps link clicked in your email. Whenever this event is triggered, a post request is sent to the URL the developer has configured to receive the webhook data. This data can then be used for a mul multitude of different things, such as storing it locally or perhaps triggering an event in their system based on the data that is sent. A popular use for webhooks is to obtain information in real time about how effectively messages are delivering and how engaged they are with these messages. With each email you send, there are several possible events that can be triggered for that email. With Mailgun, you can configure webhooks for up to seven different events that, that can occur for every email sent. These events are delivered, dropped, bounced, complained, unsubscribed, opens, and clicks. I like to split up these events and categorize them into two different groups based on what triggers them. Uh, delivered, bounced, and dropped events are all dependent on what happens during the message delivery. I like to classify these as email delivery webhooks. Once one of these events occurs for a message, the other two should not occur. The other events, opens, clicks, unsubscribes, and complaints are all triggered after the message delivers and are based on how the recipient engages with your emails. I like to classify these as recipient engagement webhooks. Now let's take a look at this email that Angela sent out notifying everyone of this, of this hangout and see what events uh, are triggered for this message. We'll just assume that she has configured all the webhooks possible for a Mailgun account and that I'm just going to kind of do, uh, like activate all the uh, events that could happen with this email. Now, just by receiving this email, the delivered webhook has already been called and her endpoint has been notified of this. Actually, the webhook was probably called prior to the mailbox receiving the message, as Mailgun sends this request once we receive a success response back from the recipient server during the email's SMTP session. Um, most of the times it takes a couple seconds for the uh, recipient server to deliver that message to the uh, user's mailbox. Well, it's normally in the milliseconds, so they probably happen at the same exact time. Um, in the case that Mailgun received a uh, different response, like a 500 error, which is a hard bounce, the bounce webhook would be called instead. Uh, the one other event that is based on email delivery is the dropped webhook. This webhook encompasses any message that failed to deliver to the recipient. Uh, this also includes hard bounces and messages that failed due to continued soft bounces. So if you have the dropped webhook configured, it's going to include all hard bounces. So uh, it's a good idea to not have hard bounces and dropped setup because then you might be getting duplicate post requests for each, uh, for each bounce message. 
Uh, as we can see, the message in question here was delivered successfully. Now we can move on to the second group of events that can now occur for this message. I've already opened this message, so the open webhook has, has also been called and the endpoint notified. Mailgun and tracks opens based on a transparent PNG file that is present in HTML emails sent with this feature enabled. Whenever the PNG file is open, it notifies Mailgun of this event and it will in turn call the webhook. I could also click on the register now URL in this button, which will trigger a click event. For this feature to work, you would also have to have the appropriate uh, CNAME records to your DNS as specified in our uh, control panel documentation. If you enable click tracking, links will be overwritten and pointed to our servers so we can track uh, clicks on them. Now if I perhaps did not want to receive this email, I can always click on the unsubscribe button at the bottom of it. This will redirect me to the unsubscribe page where I can uh, unsubscribe from these types of messages. Doing this will call the unsubscribe webhook with details about the unsubscriber and the message itself. But if I really, really didn't want to receive this message, and I'm already kind of mad at Milgan because you've been sending me this stuff and I don't even want it anymore. I've unsubscribed on everything. I could always mark this message as spam with my provider. This will call the complaints webhook with data about this complaint. So now that we've covered all the different events um, that can occur for, for uh, that it can occur in our associated with webhooks, let's dig into the different parameters and information that is associated with, with each webhook event. Let's go ahead and just skip through to the end of this right here. <laughs> um, all of the webhooks will have common parameters or data that is sent with each webhook event. Um, these are the event type, the recipient that triggered the event, some common message headers such as the message ID, tag, or campaign ID, and the sending domain. There will also be parameters that are specific to the type of event it is. Email delivery events will contain data about the status of the SMTP session, like an error code for the bounce event, and other useful data about the status of the email. Recipient engagement events will contain data like the country the message is open in, uh, the device that clicked the link, and uh, the email client or operating system that they used. All these parameters associated with these events can be found in our documentation. You should definitely review it when determining what you're interested in tracking. Now that we have a good idea of how webhooks work and the data associated with them, let's go over the process of setting them up. First things first, you want to figure out what you are interested in tracking. If you are an email administrator, you probably are interested in how your, your messages are delivering and not whether users are engaging with them. Next, you want to set up the URL. In order to receive those webhook data, users must give their ESP a URL to deliver these requests to. This means that they also need to configure this URL to point to their app. So it is accessible by the, which should be accessible by the, uh, from the public web. The third step is to write a script to capture this data and perform other actions. Something to keep in mind when writing this script is the content type the data will be sent over. The majority of our webhooks will be sent using uh, URL encoded data. However, the bounce and drop webhooks will be sent multi-part form data due to the presence of attachments in them. The deliver webhook could also be either one of these. It's really dependent on the type of the message. The t I'm sorry, the content of the message being sent. If you're sending a message with an attachment in it, of course, it'll use multi-part uh, when calling that endpoint. If not, it'll probably be URL encoded. Finally, the last step is to configure your Mailgun account with the URL you want the uh, webhook to notify. And uh, as you can see, this is a picture of our control panel, and this is where you would configure all of the webhooks. So you'd be adding all those URLs on this page. As mentioned before, you will be setting up a URL that is public-facing. Due to this, you should look into securing your webhook. Each webhook event that is called will always contain three parameters that you can use to validate it. The signature, timestamp, and token. To verify the webhook is originating from Mailgun, you need to do the following. First, you will concatenate the concatenate timestamp and token values, and then you will encode the resulting string with the HMAC algorithm using your API key as the key in SHA-256 digest mode. Once you have both of these, you can compare the resulting hex digest to the signature. If they match, success. If not, you might want to dig into where this request is coming from. It might be uh, someone trying to do replay attacks on your, your app. Optionally, you can cache the token value locally and not honor any subsequent requests with the same token. This will prevent replay attacks from occurring. Uh, another option is you can check if the timestamp is not too far from the current time. 
uh, most of the time, if someone's trying to do like a replay attack, the timestamp might be might be off. Now I covered this previously, but uh, you can find the URL to our web webhook documentation listed here on this slide. So, all right, let's kind of uh, let's, let's go ahead and jump into our uh, use cases here. Uh, we're gonna have two different use cases with webhooks. The first one is gonna be aimed at developers, and we'll focus on the email delivery webhooks that I mentioned earlier. And the second one is for UX designers, and we'll focus on the recipient engagement webhooks. In this use case, our developer on the left here is, is, is interested in capturing bounce requests for the emails he is sending. We'll be using Heroku as the platform that we host our web app, web app on, and Mailgun as the ESP. The examples I provide will also be in Python. I chose Heroku for these examples as it's a great platform for hosting web apps, web apps such as these. They provide an easy to use uh, command line interface, have a great documentation on how to get started, and also have a ton of integration options. The link at the bottom of this slide takes you to their documentation on how to get started with Python. I definitely recommend going through, through this first to set up your environment if you're going to be um, basing uh, what you're doing off of uh, my slides here. Now, um, so here's a test script for capturing bounce requests. What this script does is capture any post request sent to the bounce route for your URL. It then captures the attachment, which contains the original bounce message, and the message headers. It will then save the attachment to a temporary file and send an email to a static address with the message headers in the body uh, and the file attached. With some small adjustments, you can even configure the script to pull the original sender of the message and send the email to that address instead. This adjustment is really useful if you're managing multiple senders uh, and want to notify them of bounces instead of receiving them yourself. As you also noticed, um, I have this running on port 3388. So when you configure your URL in the Mailgun panel, you'll need to point it there. You'll uh, you'll see this in my next slide. So oh, maybe you won't see this. I guess I didn't add it. Um, so now that we have a test test script configured, we'll go ahead and plug in the URL of our Heroku app in the Mailgun control panel. Let's go ahead and hit the test button to make sure that all is well with this setup. You can see from the screenshot that an OK response was issued back which is indicated that this test was successful. Now, you can also check your Roku logs to see the status of the request and make sure that it was actually successful and that your app didn't crash or uh, something else happened. Uh, we can see here from the Roku logs that we received a post request to, this, to the bounce route and a 200 status was issued. Since we see successes on both ends here, here let's go ahead and check our email. Success. If everything is running smoothly, you should start receiving messages that look like this or like you if you altered the script a little bit. Um, you can see this message contains the message headers captured earlier, as well as the message mime of the bounced uh, of the originally bounced message. So um, let's go ahead and move on to the next use case. In this use case, our UX developer, the dapper Lee Monroe there on the left is interested in knowing how users are engaging with our welcome emails by tracking clicks. We will begin we will again be using Heroku and Mailgun for this case. However, we'll also be using Keen.io. Keen.io is a great product for storing and visualizing data. You can make tangible charts and metrics metrics with it using data obtained via these webhooks. So here's a, another script to test, uh, another test script for capturing click requests. Uh, as you can see, this script is set to capture requests into the clicked route for your URL. It will then capture the timestamp of the event, the URL that was clicked, and the IP address of the recipient. It then stores this data in a variable and sends it to the keen, sends it to keen via the keen.add underscore event line. The clicks mentioned in this line is the collection that I'm sending this data to. A collection is essentially a database that stores data sent to it in keen. So if I wanted to segregate my data, I could create the same script to capture opens instead and just name the collection opens. You could then start playing with this data in their panel or using their API. Um, to kind of go into a little bit more about collections, it's essentially just a name for you to segregate your data with. Um, or kind of think of it like a, like a box. So you, you put a name on a box and then uh, the data you send to it is what you've stored in there and then you can manip manipulate it and do what you want with it with Keen. Now, 
Now that we have a, a, a script configured, we'll go ahead and plug in the URL of our Heroku app in the Mailgun control panel. Let's go ahead and hit the test button and make sure that all is well with the setup. You can see from the screenshot that a 200 response was issued back, which is an indicator that this test was successful. If you noticed, I changed the status code issued back from OK to 200. Uh, in the script I provided, you can kind of adjust it to whatever you, you like. I'm, uh, I, I wasn't creative enough to add something uh, funny to it this time around. <laughs> so um, again, we'll go ahead and um, we'll go ahead and tail the Heroku logs to confirm that we received the test and nothing erred on our end, and that the app is still running. As you can see, there was the uh, post request to the clicked endpoint, and a uh, and we issued a 200 response back. You can now manage this data via Keen's web interface or via their APIs. This is just a screenshot of their web interface via their Heroku integration. I performed a search query on the test data received and it returned one result. Uh, this number would differ based on the amount of requests you received, however in this case I only sent one test. Um, as you can see there on the left side, uh, the collection I'm using is the clicks collection and I'm doing a uh, unique count on IP addresses. You know, like I said, I only hit the test button once for this, uh, for this specific collection, so it only returned one result. But you could do a lot more with this information and when you have more info. Uh, at the top there is a link to the, uh, is, a, is, a, is a link to the Heroku Keen integration, an add-on. I definitely recommend reviewing it to get a better look at what, at to what you can do with, uh, with uh, Keen and Heroku. So this last slide is just a general overview of the resources utilized in this slide. If you're interested in taking the same route as I have, the articles listed here are, are necessary for getting set up. They contain a lot of great information and they have a lot of details that I may have uh, covered a little bit in this, uh, in this presentation, but um, it's, it's definitely a really good reference point for moving forward. Uh, does anybody have any questions that we can kind of go over? I see a couple of people have posted a little bit, so let's <laughs> kind of take a look here. So thank you, Chris, for, for going through um, the presentation. We actually do have a lot of questions, um, so I just want to give you a break real quick. And, and let me, we had some questions submitted on our Google Plus page, so let me start there. Um, and then we're going to go through some of the questions that um, were submitted here. I know Patrick. And again, he had submitted a question um, on our Google Plus page, and I think he read through that. He submitted it uh, again here. So we'll get we'll get to these questions. But there was one question from Christopher Haydock, and uh, he uh, let me just read this out real, real quick here. He said, "I received Angela's August 18th up upcoming Google Hangout email, and just registered. Perhaps this email uses a webhook. If so, how does it work? If not, why does this Hangout notification marketing?" use uh, different technology. So um, I actually use Intercom. Intercom is a Mailgun customer and Intercom is actually a really great platform. Um, Lee, who's, who's our uh, UX designer here, he also uses Intercom pretty heavily to, to send surveys to, to customers. Um, and they have webhooks set up. So I actually didn't have to set up a webhook, so I can actually log into the intercom control panel, and based on the emails that I've sent, I'm able to see uh, engagements, recipient engagement with um, like click-throughs and opens and unsubscribes. So, um, so that's actually an interesting question because um, it got it gets me thinking. I probably it would be interesting to see if we can work with intercom and maybe do a, a case study and, and on how they have how they if. Uh, how they have webhooks set up or how they're using them. So great question. Um, okay, so and you, I don't know if you want to help help out here reading some of these questions. I know there's kind of a lot. <laughs> I certainly can. Are there specific ones you'd like to start with? Um, so I know we looked at the one from Patrick Hannigan, and, and this one okay. he also submitted one on the Google Plus page, and I think the question is pretty similar. And Chris and I had looked at that question prior. Let's start um, there. Okay. All right. So uh, Patrick's question is, uh, what are your best practices for getting deli delivery notifications in real time without DOSing the uh, receiving server when uh, sending at scale? So keeping a whole bunch of emails from uh, being delivered all at once uh, when you're getting those uh, delivery notifications. So I kind of didn't cover this in my, uh, my presentation, but I should have touched on it a little bit. Um, 
when you're sending hundreds of thousands of emails, webhooks might not be the uh, solution for you here. Uh, webhooks are really great when you're sending, uh, when you're looking for opens, clicks, unscribes, bounced, basically a medium amount of uh, post requests. But when you start getting into the delivered webhook, which will send for every single delivered message in our system, uh, and you start getting the hundreds of thousands of requests. Uh, if you're hosting with a uh, cloud service such as AWS or Rackspace or whomever, um, they'll take they may take that as a DDoS, and it's it's going to uh, it's going to cause some problems. So when you're at that scale, webhooks is not going to be the solution for you. Uh, pulling our API is probably going to be a, a better uh, uh, a better solution. That way, you uh, you don't you have to worry about just one or two requests going through as opposed to a uh, hundred hundred thousand. <laughs> Great. <clears throat> yeah, um, I think we can uh, move to the next one too. Yeah, that was, a, that was a really good question. Let's. Uh, what do we have sure. next? Um, let's go with uh, Terry's question here. Uh, Terry asks: Is it possible to use webhooks to create opt-in forms on sites without using third-party plugins and services? Uh, if so, can you collect submitter first name? Um. So in this case, uh, hmm. I want. I would want to say uh, no to this. Uh, so basically, this uh, using Mailgun, you should probably already be sending to users who have opted into your service. Um, now you can probably capture that data in your web form, but um, webhooks are more for what's already happened to your email you've sent out. So uh, in this case, uh, I wouldn't. I wouldn't quite recommend using it as an opt-in form. Good deal. Thanks for that uh, information. And then let's go with uh, Collins here. So Collins is asking, uh, would you comment on how best to test a webhook call through various uh, use cases? So I uh, use an API to send an email to a known bouncing email and see and process the webhook post back and now, where can I find a table of expected responses to various use cases? Uh, so we actually provide a test webhook button for each of our um, for each of our webhooks. It also will give you a sample of all the data we will be posting per per event when it occurs, and um, and yeah. Uh, so I'd actually recommend using those. But if you do want to use like a live address, um, we don't actually have any test addresses for you to use. Um, you can most likely set up like a, just send a like, test message to your own email address, for example, uh, and look at how the delivered post looks. Uh, again, our test post button will actually pretty much look the same. Um, so I'd, I'd actually recommend going that route instead. Uh, but it's really up to you how you want to test if you want to use a live address or not. Uh, yeah, uh, you can use either or those. Um, let's see, you also asked about where you could find a table of expected responses to uh, various use cases. Um, this will be in our documentation. We'll kind of cover how we respond to different uh, status codes and um, what information will be sent in each of these uh, webhooks. Yeah, and when we... Um when we send the recording out and post our blog, we'll make sure to include these questions along with links um, to specific articles in our documentation that you can reference um, for these questions. So it looks like we have one more question, Drew, I think. We do have one more question. And if you would like to submit additional questions, you can do so through the Cloud QA application uh, that's part of the Google Hangout. So we're uh, welcoming additional questions and feedback. Thanks, Colin, for that question. So we're going to now uh, cover Roy's question, and that is, can I set up a website example like WordPress to send all emails from the website through Mailgun on the same domain name I might be using for email at another provider like Rackspace Email or Hosted Exchange? Uh, yes, so um, this doesn't really cover webhooks, but yeah, you, you definitely can. Um, for sending, yes, and for, for receiving, no. Uh, for receiving email, your emails will only go to one environment, and you'll probably want to keep those going with your, your hosted uh, email service. For outbound emails, though, you can definitely use the same domain. Um, 
when you set up a domain with Mailgun, we require that you configure a couple of different text records to verify your owner domain. And also, uh, these records are checked when sending by most recipient servers. Uh, the only one that may conflict with those providers at all is the SPF record, if you don't have one already, um, in which case you'd be authenticating Mailgun, but not those providers. Now, they will, they do have an SPF record you can set up, so setting up both of those um, would be great, and you're, you're sending via Mailgun wouldn't have an effect on your other environments. Good deal. And thank you, Roy, for that question. It uh, looks like Alberto has a question that we can cover next. And keep those questions coming if you have them. And definitely reach out to Rackspace after the fact if you don't get a chance while we're live here. Uh, so Alberto's question is, you mentioned pulling the API when sending scale. Is polling the only option, or is there a post subservice, which webhooks is an example of, probably? Um. So uh, the better alternative here would be uh, our API, and, and that'd be the only alternative. So um, you know, if you're trying to pull information and you want to you want to pull information whenever you feel like it, using your API would be the better bet. But if you want to be notified of uh, said events and said information, webhooks would uh, uh, be best. But when you're at scale and you're using such a, if you're sending you know several hundreds of thousands of emails. Um, Instead of you can still use like our clicks and opens webhooks, and that shouldn't be that shouldn't cause too much of a a, a problem like we mentioned earlier. But the delivered webhook may be a, a problem at that sort of scale, and in which case you would most likely want to use our API for that. Um, we don't have a a pub sub uh, service. Thanks for that answer and question. Uh, Thank you. Yeah, that was a good question. Yeah, um, it looks like. Uh, we may have missed part of Colin's question, so I'm going to ask him to resubmit so that we can uh, address the part that uh, we would need to be sure we cover. But also, in the meantime, let's cover Sam's question. So uh, Sam's asking, can I use webhooks to have people directly respond to my forum by replying to the email sent to them that comes from the forum? Sent to them. Sorry, I'm just rereading your question real quick. So is it like a? It's it's um, based on an event, acting based on an event. Is that the question? Um. Yeah. I, I'm sorry. I was like a little bit misunderstanding your question here. Uh, if you don't mind, Sam, if you if you can uh, update a little bit. And clarify a bit more what you're you're looking at, um, and I'll, I'll go ahead and address that when I when I've reviewed it a little bit further. Okay. He wants to have it. Well, then we can uh, we can come back to okay. that one once uh, we have clarification. Okay. And um, let's go back to uh, Colin's question since he uh, he has the other half to address. So Colin's asking, after configuring some Mailgun webhooks in your API, I would like to comment about the testing process. At the Mailgun website, there is no log of what callbacks were made to our API. Uh, so yeah, that is correct. Uh, we, we do not log uh, successful posts to, uh, to your endpoint. Uh, we will log uh, failed webhook uh, posts in the logs tab. The exception here would be the delivered webhook, in which case we uh, we don't actually log that based on the the number of requests uh, that happen. Um, but uh, all other all other requests should be logged there on failed attempts only. All right, and it looks like so Lucas uh, tried to clarify, and then we'll actually let's just go ahead and use uh, Sam's clarification here. And people get an email when the form is updated. And I would rather them just reply to the email than click the link and go to the form to respond there. And uh, yeah, Lucas responds with, okay. basically, he wants to respond above this line to post to the forum type of functionality. So would that be something that's possible?
Um, you know what? Let me uh, let me come back to that one after reviewing it further. Um, I'm not too sure off the top of my head whether you'd be able to use that for for uh, this type of use case or not. Okay. Yeah, that's a that's a great question. I think that would um, would be an interesting use there. Yeah, but, sure. Uh, yeah, I think it's a, it's a great question. I understand what he's asking. I'm just um, we just have to. Probably think about a little bit more. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So we'll um, definitely, Sam, we'll definitely get you an answer in our um, in our blog post uh, with the recording, and uh, we'll give you a detailed answer in there. Good deal, and thanks, Sam. Uh, let's go then back to Colin for uh, this update. Uh, there's only a test webhook link on the page where you wire up each webhook. Uh, this post is. This posts a set of test parameters to the configured link, but I found nowhere where I can see a log of if, when, and the content of the actual web post made in the repo. It looks like he also added some more here. Yeah, it looks like there's a little bit more to, at the bottom there from Colin. Let's see. Yeah, and that says in response to... Bouncing around here. There we go. In response to, say, an accepted message, uh, the same log could be used to repost the web of call uh, for further testing. Yeah, so, um, so uh, like I mentioned previously, we don't actually uh, log the data being sent in the, in the webhook request. Now we do, you know, since the webhooks are based on different events, we do log it, those informations in the, the logs tab. Uh, based on that event. Now the actual content via, sent via the webhook post is not logged in there. Uh, so as I touched on in my presentation, uh, one example of data you might see in the webhook post that you would not see in the uh, in the logs would be the bounced webhook. Uh, with that webhook, we'll send the content of the message that was uh, that was bounced, and you would not see that in our logs. Uh, we don't actually store message content. So uh, that would be missing there. But um, you know, any other webhook data um, that is sent or posted to your endpoint wouldn't be logged uh, anywhere in our panel. Uh, the exception here being if it failed to post or we received an error response back, then we'll have uh, details about the post uh, in that logs tab. Very good. Thank you very much. And Colin or anyone else who has additional questions or comments, uh, keep them coming, and we will keep working through those. And uh, as usual, you'll have access to Rackspace resources to get those questions answered if you're not able to be watching this live. Yeah, uh, definitely. And Felix has a question. We'll cover that one here quickly. Uh, is there a way to get responses to JSON or XML format for the delivered webhook? Um, so... Depending on the uh, depending on the webhook, we're either going to send it send it in uh, the content type will either be URL encoded or multi-part form data. Now inside of that webhook, depending on the parameter, it should be uh, in JSON. Uh, the exception here is there's a couple of uh, parameters that contain data, like the message headers that are going to be uh, in a in a string form instead. Um, but there isn't a, a way to change the the format of the data being posted, unfortunately. Um, It'll it'll be simply uh, in those uh, content types listed earlier, or uh, it'll be uh, dependent on the parameter. Good deal. Thanks, Felix, for the question. Um, it looks like, go ahead. I'm wondering, I'm wondering if Lucas is just is he replying to Sam's question earlier, or is this an actual question for us? Well, I will read it, and we will decide. OK. <laughs> yeah, I think this might be in regards to Sam's, I think it was Sam regarding the forum question. But yeah, mm -hmm. go ahead and read it out. And and also, there's um, within the Rackspace community, there are places to, to go in and talk through these types of things uh, with other customers and with Rackers. So look at uh, community.rackspace.com to have uh, those sorts of ongoing conversations um, even after this event is over. But let's uh, read through uh, Lucas's response here. How about using inbound routing to forward to an email address or endpoint that is set up to post to the forum? Forwarding to an address seems like overkill. 
when you could use regular uh, forward at your domain level, but an endpoint sounds good. Uh, this is regarding the form post question earlier, which is his other comment in the uh, Q&A. So that does sound like a, like a recommendation. Um, yeah, you yeah, a question, I, I but could you comment yeah. on that potentially? Um, yeah, you could use it for that. You could uh, use our uh, routing feature to uh, to forward that to uh, an endpoint or a script you've written, and um, it can it can either update that forum or uh, send it to another email address. Yeah, thank, what, uh, thank you, Lucas. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to, I wanted to definitely look at the uh, the earlier question and, and re-review it so I could give you a uh, a better answer and see uh, what exactly you're trying to do. Yeah, and as these get to live on, um, we'll be able to go in and review and have a more solid formulated uh, answer that's backed with documentation and all that good stuff. Yeah. All right, well, um, there's a little bit more time for questions if anybody has them. It doesn't look like there are any in the Q&A app now. Um, are there any closing thoughts or uh, locations to go to get more information that you could provide? Yeah, so um, we are, um, this will be a record, this is recorded, so it'll be a YouTube video, and we'll definitely send, that, send this out to all those that registered. Uh, and it will be on our blog at blog.melgrand.com. And as mentioned before, I will also include all the questions that were asked. There were a lot of them, really great questions. So thank you for that. Um, we'll make sure to include those questions along with the answer. Um, and some of them we, we may not have covered, so we'll definitely uh, make sure to, to go in depth there. And um, yeah, and we haven't decided on our what our next topic is going to be for this Hangout series. So if anybody has any uh, recommendations, please let us know. Um, I know we're going into um, a very high traffic season, and so I'm sure people have questions about uh, scaling um, and whatnot. So you know that might be um, a good good topic as well. So if anybody has suggestions, please let us know. We're happy to. We'd we'd love to put some uh, some other good content together together for y'all. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, if there's any features you, you definitely want to know about in future uh, posts or uh, hangouts, please let us know so we can uh, definitely provide that info for you. Uh, I do see that a couple more questions have come up here. Uh, I think we have a little bit of time. That we, yeah, yeah, I think we have a little bit more time left that we can yeah. uh, kind of address them. I think that sounds great. Let's go ahead and uh, put Alberto's up there first because it doesn't look as much like a question as a, a comment. So thanks for the flyover. Good job. Uh, one comment. Zoom in a bit more on the code examples. So ah, we, can, yeah. we can take that feedback. That's good stuff, Alberto. And, um, yeah. Yeah, thank you, Alberto. I noticed that when we so when we were looking at it prior to this, it, it didn't seem like it seemed like it was zoomed in, but it looks like during the hangout, sometimes it skews a little bit smaller. So yeah, we, we noticed that. So we'll definitely, when we, um, like I said, the blog post, we'll definitely include you know, a better view of the code so you can take a look at that. But yeah. thanks, for, thanks for the comment on that. Yeah, these will be posted online, so you can you can reference it there. But thank you, yeah. Next time I'll, I'll get a little, little better picture of it. <laughs> <laughs> and when you go back to review it, just throw it up on that big cinema display, and you'll feel like you're right there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go to uh, Colin's uh, next question here. At what level of emails would you say you should move to a polled model rather than a webhook model? So if you're if you're sending like a probably I'd probably say a good uh, a good amount there would be about fifty thousand or more. Um, again, this really just depends on what webhook you're looking to use um, or what information you're really looking for. The real offender of uh, you know DDoSing your server or, or overloading it with the request is really going to be the delivered webhook. All the other webhooks should be pretty much sufficient, um, except when you start maybe getting in the millions of emails range. Then you know you'll start having hundreds of thousands of uh, uh, of uh, other events occurring, and that could definitely overload your your environment if it's not if it's not ready or uh, for that load of, of information. Um, but if you're if you're sending you know between five thousand to twenty thousand emails a day, even even more than that, then uh, webhooks are definitely going to be the way to go. Uh, it's when you start getting to a very high volume amount of email, high high volume amount of email that you may want to look into a pulled rather than a uh, push. So you, the threshold you're saying is about is it about fifty thousand? Yeah, um, you know it, it really depends on your environment. 
to be honest, uh, and how it's it's configured to handle these requests. Oh, and, so uh, says, he says six million. Oh wow, six, six million a month. <laughs> um, yeah, it depends on how spread out that would be. I would imagine. Yeah, uh, I mean, I, I know that some users will uh, they will spread out their emails a, a little bit over you know each each hour so that they're not uh, hammering their endpoint uh, with just like you know just submitting million emails and then. Uh, all of a sudden, their their endpoint just gets absolutely hammered with all these these requests, and uh, instead of doing that, they may spread it out among each hour. So if you're sending you know 100,000 emails and you spread it out like that, that's a that's a good way to to use webhooks as well. But um, again, you know you'd have to kind of alter your email traffic, and uh, it's really up to you whether you want to make that decision. You know, is is it worth getting these uh, push these push notifications? As opposed to pulling the API, and then I have to, you know, with the push notifications, I have to kind of alter my uh, the time frame in which I send my emails. So it's a uh, so uh, it's kind of up to you in that sense. Um, again, I know like uh, Heroku probably wouldn't be able to handle a large amount of requests like that, uh, but if you have a very dedicated resource, uh, and maybe an in Rackspace cloud that's that, that's uh, configured to handle a large amount of requests, or is very uh, has a lot of resources. You may be able to handle a, a much higher amount, um, but uh, yeah, that's that's definitely some things to take in consideration when you're determining whether to use them or not. There are certainly tools that are more tailored to specific uh, use cases. So, using the right tool for the right thing goes a long way. Definitely. And, and Colin, we're not the, you're not the only one who can't wait till Christmas. I've got a couple of kids <laughs> who are dying to be at Christmas already. And it's hot here in early September, so we're looking forward to it as well for plenty of reasons. Um, well, anyone else who has questions or, or comments, uh, feel free to shoot them our way. You can put them in the comments section of the uh, event here, and we'll be able to reference them again as we go forward. Um, and then also in the blog post. Um, I think we're about to the end of time, unless uh, we get any last-minute questions here under the wire. Um, so I thank you guys both for uh, for your part in uh, providing this information to our users, for our mail gun consumers, and thanks to all the audience for uh, participating and for uh, joining here for this event. Uh, I think there'll be another one next month that is pending uh, the feedback of the, the audience. So let us know how um, how we can target and tailor the next. Uh, conversation to uh, to your needs. Uh, if there's nothing else, I say we sign off. Yeah, thank you, Drew. Uh, yeah, thank, thank you, you for Drew. everybody that was watching today. I hope it was uh, informative and that uh, you know, please give us your feedback and let us know what you'd like to see in, in future updates and how we can uh, uh, improve this uh, improve the Hangouts. Awesome. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.